With plans for WrestleMania not changing despite Roman Reigns being pulled from day one, this is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report for January 2nd. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and also follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. After defeating Madcap Moss at day one, Drew McIntyre would be assaulted backstage by Moss and Happy Corbin, with WWE announcing that McIntyre is injured. McIntyre suffered a cervical neck strain with severe contusions. Upon further evaluation by medical staff, he will have a follow-up with an orthopedic cervical specialist. Dave Meltzer would report on Wrestling Observer Radio that McIntyre had a pre-existing neck issue, the Drew thing. I guess he's been bothered by neck problems, which is saying something, because he worked two matches every night last week. He was working a tag title match against the Usos, and he street fight against Sheamus on every show, and he was also the workhorse of WWE this year. He had more matches in 2021 than anyone. I don't think anyone believed for a second Madcap Moss was going to beat McIntyre. It's funny because with Drew being hurt, you know, they could have done it, but they didn't even dare do it. I wouldn't have either, because at the end of the day, the plan is still supposed to be Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns at some point, so he shouldn't be losing to Madcap Moss, even if he is going to be hurt. Hopefully, the injury is not too bad. In a quick update, Fightful has noted that Jeff Hardy being let go from WWE caused some issues with booking concerning himself and Drew McIntyre as they reported were told Jeff Hardy's release threw a wrench into the creative plans. Talking about the upcoming Battle of the Belts event, which will take place on Saturday, Cody Rhodes told Fight and Focus that AEW is not capable of having a B-plus show. I am really excited that Tony Khan named it Battle of the Belts because it's right there in the name. I dislike this in wrestling. This is really across the board, not speaking anything specifically, when a belt has been tarnished and they have lost their value. If you talk to wrestlers, we love our belts. Most wrestlers who are worth their salt have their own display of the belts they have ever won, and it's a significant thing. No different than Hollywood when you win an Academy Award. It's unique in that sense. And him naming it Battle of the Belts and put the emphasis on the titles. I'm not sure if all titles will be defended in this very first TNT special. We do know that with just that in mind, it being the very first special that we are doing as a part of the new contract, knowing us, me, Kenny, the Bucks, and Tony, that's not one we can leave to. We are not able at this point to have a B plus show. Prior to the day one pay-per-view, Roman Reigns was set to defend his universal title against Brock Lesnar. This match would not take place as Reigns announced that he had tested positive for COVID. Brock would instead challenge for and win the WWE title during the main event of the show. Giving a status update on his cousin Jey Uso told Sports Illustrated, it felt off not having the tribal chief. This match was for him. We represented, and he's going to be okay. He's unresting, maybe playing some Call of Duty. We're going to see him back soon. We opened the show and we're so used to seeing the big Uso close the show. This pandemic is crazy and all we want is for him to be safe and take care of himself. Despite being a main event star in NXT, Johnny Gargano would not renew his contract with WWE. With him testing free agency, Adam Cole spoke on the Throwing Down podcast about the possibility of Gargano coming to AEW. I will always mention Johnny Gargano was one of my favorite opponents of all time. We had a series of matches on NXT that to this day I'm incredibly proud of. A fanatic human being across the board, Johnny is a guy I would really love to see in AEW. Who knows, as the wrestling landscape continues to change and evolve. Gargano has been rumored to be making his debut for the company on January 26th in Cleveland. Let's we'll have to see if this comes to fruition. With former AEW star Big Swole saying there is room for improvement in the company when it comes to diversity, AEW president Tony Khan would defend himself and his promotion, but also took a shot at Swole's wrestling abilities, which brought about a ton of controversy. Posting the link to her latest podcast addressing the issue, Swole noted that it's Sunday. Take time to actually listen to the podcast instead of reading headlines and excerpts. Understand diversity isn't just a statistic. Counting us slash people of color isn't the mindset. Not one time did I ever mention anyone as racist. Comprehension is key. After 
after returning to action and squashing Bianca Belair at SummerSlam, Becky Lynch has looked unstoppable. Now, with a recent win over Liv Morgan at day one, her potential WrestleMania plans were revealed on Wrestling Observer Radio. They booked it not to kill Liv Morgan off and to go again, because I think, I mean, I don't know this, but I think the Mania match is probably Bianca Belair versus Becky Lynch. So, they need something to take time, because they don't want to do that match before Mania, if that is your big Mania match. So, you have to keep this thing going for as long as you can. Also on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer would touch on WWE's lack of depth when it comes to the upcoming Women's Royal Rumble match, as this could create problems for the bout. You really don't need two one-hour pay-per-view matches on the same show, but the whole thing that it's got to be equal and it's got to be 30, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be 30. The other thing is that when it's a bunch of people that the fans don't know, it kind of makes the match dead. 20 would be 30 on that match, for sure, but for traditional reasons, I'm relatively certain that they're gonna go 30. Despite all the hype from their main roster debut, all the members of the Hit Row faction would end up released from WWE shortly after making their way to SmackDown. Talking about their time on NXT with Canis Russell Fest, B-Fab noted that they had way more creative control there. Triple H truly gave us the reins and let us go and do what we needed to do. Everything we did on NXT and SmackDown, we wrote ourselves, down to our walkout song. Triple H knew this was a group that could do a lot of great things, and even if he didn't know exactly how to do it all, he knew that we had tons of ideas all the time. We came every week with tons of ideas. They didn't really have to tell us much. He totally let us have creative and believed in what we were doing. He always tried to keep us on the rails if we were too big as far as the ideas, but he truly believed in what we were doing. With BFAB having a 30-day non-compete clause and the rest of the faction members having to wait 90 days, it remains to be seen what's next for them. After becoming a two-time NXT champion, Karrion Cross would find himself called up to Raw. While fans had high hopes for his time on the main roster, Cross would see himself losing his debut match in a short amount of time, go through changes in appearance, and not have his manager with him. Talking to Renee Paquette, Cross revealed that John Moxley believed Cross would have been a great rival for Roman Reigns in 2019. I'm talking to him after the match, and he says like, hey, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And I'm just rattling off some ideas and stuff like that, and he goes like, hey, do whatever you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but one day, Roman's gonna need somebody else to work with after he's done working with Drew, and I'm just saying, I think you would do very well there, but go wherever you want, do whatever you want to do, and in my mind I'm like, holy sh**, that is a person who has been at the highest level recently too. With him joining EC3's Control Your Narrative stable, Cross will face off against Flip Gordon in his first post-WWE match on February 5th for WrestlePro. Speaking of John Moxley, he's been out of action since November due to him entering a rehab program for alcohol. Now, it seems his in-ring return has been announced. As Pro Wrestling Overtime wrote, GCW announcement, Homicide vs. Moxley at Hammerstein Ballroom on January 23rd. On Saturday, Homicide won the Do or Die Rumble at GCW Die 4 to earn a shot at Moxley's GCW World title, as fans should be excited to see Mox back in the ring. While there have been many debates about who is the all-time great of pro wrestling, an article was recently put out saying Chris Jericho is the current GOAT. As this did not sit well with the nature boy Ric Flair, he took to Instagram to write, you've got to be kidding me. First, it was the man, and we know who won that. They still don't own it. And now I have to deal with this? Eric Beeston, have you lost your mind? Good lord. Flair previously noted that he has no desire to go back to WWE, with fans having to wait and see what's to come for him. Despite Roman Reigns having to be pulled out of the day one pay-per-view due to COVID, ringside news has noted that this does not change WWE's plans for WrestleMania. Brock Lesnar winning the WWE title at day one was a big change of plans, but we were told that it won't affect WrestleMania. WWE is still going forward with their WrestleMania direction, and the writing team was told this change will only enhance the Roman, Heyman, Brock story.
As AEW continues to grow, F4W Online has reported that Rampage will be airing on ITV and ITV4 in the UK. When Dynamite airs on ITV, it will now also be unedited. Rampage is set to debut on ITV4 Tuesday. As Tony Khan gave insight into the success they are having while speaking to AOL, it's a point of pride for us when we get a good number, and it's a point of pride for the network. There used to be only one wrestling company that could do that, and one show that could rank number one in the 18 to 49 demographic. Now there are two companies and four shows that can boast that. I think that's great for the wrestling business, wrestlers, and wrestling fans. The TV rights fees are a big part of the business model for both AEW and WWE. The way these shows are measured are by the Nielsen ratings, particularly the 18 to 49 demo, which is how they are presented to us. Following her WWE release, Scarlett Bordeaux is keeping herself busy with other projects, as she recently had to shut down her custom request on OnlyFans due to the overwhelming response. Hey everyone, I got a massive outpour for a custom request, and I will be closing them until I've been able to respond and look at all of them. I put a lot of work into every request that I do, and if I pick up your custom, I will get back to you, so thanks for the patience. I'll also be getting a list of clothing together soon as well. A lot of people asked about Kiss cards as well, so here is what they look like. They are $100 each wall supplies last, so DM me ASAP. Owen oh, roasts are still $50 via text and $100 for a video roast. When it comes to the day one pay-per-view, WWE reportedly added more segments to the event after Roman Reigns revealed he tested positive as Fightful wrote. We're told that match times were adjusted, segments were added, and video packages added to help make up the time lost in losing the Universal title match. Despite him being a free agent and now winning the WWE title, Brock Lesnar is still listed as a SmackDown superstar. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.